Hi everyone, this is Cindy and welcome back to the channel. I am so excited to be sharing this build with you today because this is my largest build to date. So welcome to the press an urban library. We are building today in San Myshuno. This is on the 30 by 30 lot that Waterside Warbler is originally on by default. And I am so happy with how this build came out. I cannot tell you. This was such a massive undertaking. I am, as I've said before, not really confident as a builder, but I really feel like this build and some builds that I've been doing recently are really helping to stretch my comfort zone and I am just so pleased with how this came out so I'm so happy that I took the dive and went for it. Thank you so, so much to those of you who have contributed to my community polls because one of the recent community polls asked about uh, community lots that you would like to see in the game that I create and one of the votes was for a library and when I first saw that somebody had requested a library I was like okay I don't really have any ideas at the moment for libraries uh, but I will keep that uh, pinned for some point in time and then the book nook kit came to the rescue so the timing was absolutely impeccable but thank you so much for leaving that suggestion because that was definitely part of the inspiration for this build now if you enjoy this build and you would like to add it to your game you may most certainly do that it is available for download on the gallery you can find it using my ea id or hashtag higget haven that's h-y-g-g-e H-A-V-E-N. And I am so thrilled with this. Normally I build things and I don't necessarily put them in my game. In fact, I don't think I ever really put anything into my regular build game, maybe because I already have established families and lots, but I can definitely see adding this lot to my normal game, game, game safe. So that is gonna be really fun. Anyway, let's talk a bit more about the build. So, as I said, this is the press. Now, um, this is a dual purpose lot. So, when I decided to make a library, I didn't want it to just be a library. So, as you can see in this section, there's also a cafe because I was thinking that you could use this either as strictly a library or you could also run it as a cafe. So right now I have it set to be a, lot, a library lot, but if you add it to your game and you would prefer to have it as a cafe and you have get to work, of course, then you can change the lot setting and turn it into a cafe instead. Now, if you keep it as a library and you want your Sims to be able to buy coffee, then you will need to hire an NPC, which costs 100 simoleons. Um, so, you know, if you want to have it as a cafe by default, you can still use all the library objects as if it was a library, but without having to pay for the NPC. So maybe that's a better way to go. But I did leave it as a library. But I did make sure to include all of the items that are necessary for both a library and a cafe. So it doesn't matter which you choose to catalog it as in your game, it will function as both. So that is the idea here. And as far as the name goes, thank you very much to my partner. He was the brilliant one that suggested the press because the theme for this lot is very much not only just urban, but kind of like this hipster industrial kind of vibe. And I was trying to come up with, you know, a fun kind of hipster-esque name. And uh, he suggested the press because of course it could be like the printing press for the library or like a French press for your cafe. And I absolutely loved that. So thank you very much, sweetheart. That was wonderful. 
So I have been building the exterior. We have the general shape now. Actually, we have the final shape more or less here already sorted out. And you can see that I have used these beautiful, beautiful windows from Growing Together. I love these windows so much. And yet I have not used them like since my very first build when Growing, growing Together came out, which quite frankly is a crying shame. So I absolutely had to use them here. And I knew that they would work perfectly with that industrial vibe and the industrial loft kit. And I also knew that I wanted to have like this mezzanine level or be able to look up into the roof line, which by the way, I am absolutely in love with the roof that I used here. It is just, oh, I love this roof. I just cannot express in words how much I love this look. So I'm using those windows and I'm using a lot of spandrels here. You'll see that I also sunk the library level down uh, one level. So your Sims have to step down into it and the, you have these beautiful floor to ceiling windows. Um, and as I said, this mezzanine level, we have a very grand staircase, which Oh my goodness, it took far too long for me to work out where to put this stair, um, staircase. I knew that I wanted something that looked kind of grand, but I wasn't really sure where to place it. And I also knew that in the library section, I didn't want to just have bookcases and stacks and desks and everything that you need. I also wanted to include some special sitting areas as well. So I wanted like a seating area where, you know, if you wanted to have like a book club, your Sims could sit. And of course we needed the chess tables, which I'm putting in here. And then I also decided here, you can see up on the second level, I have some extra rooms because I thought, ooh, let's put some study rooms in. And that, by the way, is not an idea that I can take credit for. Shout out to Petey Plays It. He has amazing ideas for how to kind of amp up your game and get a little bit more out of it. So if you haven't watched any of his tutorials, can highly recommend. He is hilarious and I love his personality and he's so joyful and energetic, but he has great ideas. And one of them for libraries was to have like little study rooms and things. So I wanted to include that because I thought it was such a great idea and makes this room or this build rather just more functional. So trying to figure out where to put the staircase and include all of those things was a challenge. But I got there in the end and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out and I hope you will agree. So here I'm just picking out walls and floors because I envisioned that this was originally a warehouse that's been converted into a library. I have opted for the book nook um, uh, paneling wall because, you know, it's new and it has, you know, that cohesion with the uh, the bookcases, which I'm also going to be using from the kit, which you'll see I'm going to pull out here shortly. But then for the flooring, I used some polished concrete because I reckon that, you know, after it was converted from a warehouse, which would have just had regular concrete floors into this library, they decided, hey, let's keep some of the original walls and floors and, and all of that, and we'll just polish them up. And I think it looks so great. So here we are just kind of decorating the cafe. I had some furniture in here previously and those were just placeholders because I like to try and think that I learned from my mistakes. And if you've watched my one of my previous most recent builds, which was the Wheelie Good Bike Shop, which is a retail store that I built in Magnolia Promenade, which I will put a link to in the cards here, you will have noticed that I built that entire building and it looked fantastic, in my opinion, hopefully you agree. And then I went to decorate the inside and realized, oh my goodness, it is too big. And so then I had to strip the whole building back and reduce the size and it was a whole thing. And I thought, you know what? I don't want to do that with this build. So I put placeholders down, but now you can see I've swapped them out to the actual furniture that I'm going to be using. And I use this great fireplace from Snowy Escape because I think it really fits with the industrial vibe. I also use this beautiful uh, cafe coffee mural, which is also from the industrial loft kit. And 
I'm going to tell you right now, I am absolutely obsessed with these wall murals. I, I use no less than three of them in this one build alone. I also got to use that super distressed giant rug without sizing it down, and I love that for me. So hopefully you enjoy that as well. And just getting in some lights, making sure that they hang from the spandrels and not from thin air. I do, I think, swap those out for the same lights, but just a little bit shorter so they don't hang quite as low. Uh, but they are used throughout the build as well. And then we're just popping in some plants because it is incredibly hard for me to build something without plants. But here we are back in the reception and I had put down these counters and now I'm just working out um, some computers. I didn't want your Sims to like use these computers because this is supposed to be the checkout area, but I wanted to still use these island counters, but then the computers are on the wrong side of the counters. So you'll see that I've placed them on some island counters and then shrunk the counters down and placed them inside the other counters. So that's a cute little hack. Uh, that you can use. Now it does mean that the librarian won't be able to sit at and use these computers. No Sims will be able to. If that annoys you, then you can simply move the shrunken down island out of there, uh, attach a chair to it, and then move it back in. That is certainly one option, but I just didn't think it was realistic for Sims just to wander in and use the reception computers. So that's why I did that. So now I'm just trying to pick out a rug and I decided to use this really funky Art Deco rug and I think it works so well in this space. And then we just put in a couple of library carts because of course you're going to need those for book returns. And I kind of jump around throughout this build. This is kind of another insight into the way that Cindy's brain works, which quite frankly is completely shiny objects. Uh, so I do kind of jump around, as you've seen, like in the library, in the reception, in the cafe, back to the reception, upstairs, outside. <laughs> but that's just the way that it worked. And in the end, I think it came together really well. So if that's how it works to get there, then we're going to go with it. But uh, yeah, I also added in this little painting here from the Book Nook kit. I thought it was really cute, like a, hey, ask us. And then, of course, as I said, jumping back into the cafe to add in some board games and uh, a little mobile chess table. And then we are starting on the bookcases. And I have super sped up uh, anything to do with like the bookcases and things like that because it's very repetitive and I wasn't going to sit here and make you watch all of it. Also, when we get to the book uh, bookcases upstairs, there is a small portion that I leave in and then I cut the rest out because again, you don't really need to watch me put in like 50 bookcases. Um, but one thing that I do want to mention is I did notice that the bookcases are still a little bit buggy. I don't, well, not buggy. They're a little bit glitchy. Now that could just be me. Uh, this could entirely be a situation of problem exists between keyboard and chair. However, as you can see here, they are a little glitchy. Uh, I don't know if that's just because I was putting them underneath the stairs. That is entirely a possibility. But uh, I did notice that, and also here in the corners, they are a little bit tricky every now and then. But, uh, you know, in the end, I got them to work. Uh, sometimes I found that switching the camera angle, either like tilting it or from the opposite side or putting the walls down, seemed to help with that. So if you find that you're struggling as well with them being a bit glitchy, maybe try some of those things. But over here by the toilets, I put some magazine racks and uh, I also had that funky little light and put some magazine clippings in there. So I thought that looked really well, uh, really good. I, I don't know. Anyway, it's a long voiceover. So forgive me if I stumble over my words. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, if you make it to the end of this video, you are the real MVP here. And thank you so much for those of you who stick with it, because I realize my videos are usually a third of this length. But like I said, this is my largest build ever. So, but I'm so proud of it. But anyway, this area that I'm doing, I'm finally working on the computers. So this portion here on the left is actually the research data computer that comes with university. It's basically microfiche. Now, um, most of you, I 
don't know if you're going to know what microfiche is because honestly I haven't been in a library that uses one since my university days uh, but there's a microfiche machine and then I have two additional computers that your sims can actually use over on the right hand side and then I wanted some actual stacks we've got bookcases all along the outside of this room but I wanted some actual stacks uh, and, you know, it also kind of helps to focus your eyes up to that beautiful ironwork grand staircase. So I'm adding those in here. I'm also going to be putting a little bit of seating in here in the center. And I also love this giant, like, light that came with growing together as well so I needed to use that in a couple of places originally I had these chairs in the center and then I was like no that's going to block you know the flow and I don't want to do that so I pushed them outside and that worked so much better and then here underneath the staircase I didn't want a whole bunch of dead space so I put in another little seating area I did place the sofa with move objects off so it is fully functional and I have play tested this entire build and your sims can absolutely sit on that sofa. Uh, I don't think the coffee table is functional, however. And then I also am in love with these laundry day rugs underneath the staircase. They fit perfectly, also without any resizing. And I just love the color that it adds to this space. And it's just, oh, it just came together so well. I know I said it took me six hours to build it, and legitimately it did. But it still came together so well. I mean, to be fair, this was also my my second attempt, much like the bike shop. Uh, but once I kind of got, you know, the second attempt going, it just came together so smoothly. Anyway, into the toilets. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time here in the toilets. They are pretty simple, but I did swap out the walls to the painted brick that I used on the exterior, and I think it works so much better. It kind of has like an industrial slash art deco kind of feeling in here, especially with the sinks that I used. Uh, but I kept it pretty basic. We've got a couple of sinks and obviously some, you know, toilet cubicles and I also noticed that these cubicles which I think are the ones that came from high school years have these little shelves on the back and I know that this is a public toilet it makes no sense really but I couldn't not put anything on these shelves so here we are I'm adding some plants and some books because that's just who I am so now we're on the outside because I realized that there was a lot of just big blank exposed brick walls and I wanted something more interesting so I decided to add some windows in to the front of the build and again I wanted something that was going to be like really large it's not quite floor to roof line uh, but I found these base game windows and I thought they fit the vibe really really well but they didn't go all the way down to the ground so I added in this like little box planter with a whole bunch of hedges in it and I think it looks really great it's so simple but I love how it works so I'm really glad that I made that change and then of course we had to come in here and remove some of the bookcases you will see that some of the hedges are clipping in but do not fear I do go and use tool to just shift those hedges forward a little bit so they are no longer clipping in uh, but then, of course, I had to deal with the glitchy bookcases again. And here is where I discovered if you swing the camera around and drop the walls, all of a sudden it placed perfectly fine. So, again, I don't know if that's an issue with me or the game. I feel like in this instance it was the game. But anyway, we are moving on to Count It Mural number two. And then we are adding some lighting in because that is also very important. So just getting some lights around the entranceway here. You'll see that I had um, put this foundation down when I originally started building because I thought maybe I will try and use some foundation. I'm still, you know, kind of experimenting with foundations and platforms. And then I also had placed down this really funky flying bird light sculpture that came with city living because I've never used it and I'm like hey maybe that would be a fun thing to add in as something a little bit different and again push those boundaries and experiment a little uh, and I end up moving around a whole bunch of times starting here 
and eventually it gets deleted and I don't use it at all. But, you know, that's fine because, again, it's all about the experimentation. So we just go with it. It's fine. And then I thought that these, uh, this living green wall from Eco Lifestyle worked really well on this little bump out piece here, which I think just adds so much to the front of this build. So it's not just so boxy. So I really liked adding that in and I put so many signs, uh, but I think they go together really well. So you can see we've got one by the front door here and then I've pulled out this other sign and I finally decided to ditch the foundation. And I think that was a good choice because I was looking, you know, like this back section behind with the trees and I wanted more green. There's so much sidewalk already, which, you know, it is a city. So I understand that there should be a lot of pavement and sidewalk in most cities. But I really wanted to blend it in with just this kind of neighborhood block area. So I felt like it needed more green. But we are putting a very small car park. Uh, I imagine this is more for like the staff parking rather than the patrons or patrons. I mean, Again, it's a city, so they're probably like going to use the subway or walk or something to that effect. And then I start in on a little bit of landscaping since we're here. I use a couple of these debug uh, like garden beds and I think they work really well because I didn't want to go too over the top with the landscaping. Um, but here I'm just kind of dithering on where to put the sign. And I also pop in a couple of trees and I tried to match them again to some of the trees that are just behind the library to again have that feeling of cohesion. And then for the actual garden bed, we put in like some greenery and I get some, uh, not hostas, uh, hortensias. Um, so we pop those in and I also dug out of the debug menu, the beautiful, beautiful yellow poppies from the growing together expansion because oh, I love these flowers. I just, they're so yellow like the bright yellow it's just so happy and I also ended up changing the hortensias to a white because I had them kind of a cream color but I felt like against the white painted brick they just looked dirty so we changed those to a white and then we're just adding in those gorgeous poppies that I love and I put in a little bit of grass here and then uh, we needed kind of like some height and just sort of some all over flowers so I pull out some of these kind of I don't know purple like wild flowers sort of things these things here but you know the purple and the yellow they kind of you know pop together uh without giving Easter vibes which I guess is a good thing so yeah we add those in and then coming out from the bump out here I decided to add in a second like little hedge planter uh, because again, I thought it worked so well on the front that I thought, okay, let's add another one in and it kind of, you know, has this waterfall effect from the uh, bump out. So I thought that worked really well and I was really happy with how that looked. So we add that in. And I put also a little garden spot and some more trees over here on the other corner. So just popping the same trees in. I don't actually put any terrain paint underneath them because the trees behind the library didn't have any and it suddenly looked kind of weird. But then just bringing over some of the plants, not all of them, but some of them that we had in the first garden planter, again, just to have like that feeling of cohesion here. And then I added a couple of these really nice decorative bullards to the front property. I tried to get the same ones as I saw in the rest of the world, but for some reason I couldn't find the city living ones in the debug menu. But I think these ones look really cool as well. And then I also wanted a sign that kind of looked like an opening hours here, but before I found something that worked for that, uh, I tried to, well, I found actually um, other signs that I thought could be like the library sign. So here I am being incredibly indecisive and I go through three different signs and then I found this one with the magnifying glass and I was like, that's perfect for a library. So we popped that in. And now we're just moving on to a chimney because, of course, I added that fireplace 
in the cafe and then realize, okay, I need a chimney because that's kind of important. So we're adding a chimney in and I also added the like chimney roof decorations here uh, that have more of like an industrial chimney kind of vibe. So they look pretty cool, I think. So we add those in and then we have some other roof decor here for like the ventilation and so forth. So I pop those in. I think one of the things that works really well about that bump out is it kind of hides it from the main view of the library which maybe that was part of the initial building design but then we're also just getting some more lights in here uh, around the giant windows and then I deleted out those other windows on the rooftop because you can't actually see them from inside so they were a bit pointless and if you are keeping track that was mural number three because again I am completely obsessed <laughs> But here we are finishing up inside. I say finishing up, um, it's going to take a, a few more minutes. But on the inside, I added in the chess tables and then we're doing the study rooms. Again, one of them, this one here is just a study study room and we have the high school years whiteboard. Uh, your Sims can't access the two chairs that are up against the whiteboard, but the other four chairs they can because I have play tested that and checked. And then the second room, which is what we're in now, this is going to be a media production room, which again, kudos to PD Plays It when he made the suggestion. He also recommended like using one room to do like the media production where you can your sims can make like youtube videos or simtube videos i guess um because that's kind of a larger awkward shaped object that maybe won't fit in every sims household depending on how large of houses you like to play in so it's kind of nice that if it's not something that can fit in your sims house that you can come here and do that instead and i also put in that giant uh clock down in the reception love it totally in love with her she is gorgeous um and then oh i also found this like ironwork coffee cup sign and i wanted to add it here for the cafe so i had to add like an extra wall in order to have it jutting out the in the direction i wanted it and then just delete the wall which is a cool little tip if you didn't know how to do that before and uh, we're just finishing off really the upstairs with the little study rooms and then here is um, a, like a seating area on either side actually of the stairs coming up I have two seating areas so there's this one and one on the other side I decorate them entirely identically so I'm only going to show this one that I'm doing now I love this swatch on the industrial loft kit rug it is so funky and fabulous and I love that it just adds a little bit of extra color in and then I get these beautiful colored posters again just for a little extra color but this is where I figured that you know if you had like a book club maybe your sims would want to come and sit here and have like book club to talk about and then I'm just adding in some more library stacks here I don't show all of them I also notice in the stacks downstairs where the seating area is in front of the chairs or the stairways every now and then when I loaded the lot one of them would glitch out and disappear and I don't know why that is um, but it was very inconsistent so I have replaced them but if they disappear in your game if you add it to your game I'm really sorry about that but just add it back in I couldn't get it to stop but maybe it won't be a problem for you but anyway it's been a very very long video but if you enjoyed this video a like is always much appreciated but thank you so so much for watching please subscribe to the channel for more content and I'm just going to finish off and leave you with so many screenshots. I had a hard time choosing, but I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you so much and have a lovely day.